it is my honor to have Mr. Burt Randolph Sugar on So Much to Talk About. Mr. Sugar, thank you. It's nice to be here. At my age, it's nice to be anywhere. <laughs> <laughs> I know what you mean. I definitely know what you mean, for sure. Like, for, for me, I'm glad I woke up this morning. That's, I broke me. Joe DiMaggio's record for consecutive times getting up. <laughs> And speaking of Joe DiMaggio, you have to tell the quote that um, said about uh, Willie oh. Mays, the Willie Mays catch. Oh, I used to have the pleasure of knowing Joe very well. And I took him to a fight, um, several of them, but one I remember particularly. And I said, Joe, could you have made that catch Willie Mays made in the 54 series off Vic Works? He thought a second. He just said, I wouldn't have lost my cap. <laughs> Wow, wow. Two of the greatest greatest players ever. And, oh, easily. Yeah, that's for sure. And Willie Mays was honored yesterday at the All-Star Game, uh, last night in San Francisco. Yeah, you know, Willie, Willie was a great player. I mean, you know, maybe we never gave him his just due because, I mean, there are others of that era who might have been as good, but he was in New York, so he got a lot of press. Roberto Clemente, to me, is probably one of the most under, underwritten, undersold, undersung mm -hmm players of that era but Willie was unbelievable mm -hmm. but you had Mantle who overwhelmed him in the press right right not in the statistics that's right but in the press mm -hmm. but M Mays was just unbelievable yes yeah. yes and I call him like pretty much the first five tool player who can run hit for average hit for power throw and field like the first oh, he could he guy. could um, and you know I followed baseball back then I was brought up in Virginia, then Washington, D.C., mm -hmm. and uh, that presupposes you were ever brought up. And uh, I used to go to Homestead Grays games. Oh, wow. Because they played in Washington. Josh Gibson. I mean, I never saw him. He, was, oh, okay. he had passed before I became an, you know, a big addict of black or Negro League baseball, as they called it. But I watched some of the great players and play. I never knew. I, you know, I wouldn't have known. In today's world, what no pepper playing allowed means, because I'd never seen pepper play till I saw them play. It was like the Harlem Globetrotters times three. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, They'd mm -hmm. bat the ball, the ball would roll up their arm and come out their sleeve, behind their back, through their legs. I mean, it was just wonderful to watch. And to see the great players, the Dobies and the Monty Irvins. In fact, on a side, I once had a chance to sit with Buck O'Neill for a few hours. And I said, Buck, whom did you and the other players in the Negro League think would be the first to break the color barrier? His answer, Monty Urban. Talk about how great he was for, for the fans that oh, don't really know. He was playing with Newark. He led the league in batting. I think he had 400 one year. <laughs> and, uh, Is it over 406? I don't think so. You know, who knows? The records, the problem with the Negro League is the records were very ill-kept. Uh, you couldn't find it in the general press, and then the, the black press would only cover it if they could afford to get there. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, you read a lot about their all-star game in Chicago, because everybody was there. Mm -hmm. yeah. But it was it was a heck of a... I mean, to watch uh, Double Duty Dandridge, and his, even in Satchel, and, and, and uh, Cool Papa, and these people. Papa Bell. I mean, these were unbelievable players. And, of course, my alternatives are to see the Washington Senators. <laughs> oh, boy. Yeah. I mean, they, their double play combination was second, first to, short to second of the right field stands. <laughs> and their cleanup hitter's imitation of Babe Ruth was pointing to the pitcher's mound if he could get it that far. <laughs> So no wonder I was a Homestead Grays fan. The Watson Senators, it was it was good that they moved to the uh, problem is there, Minnesota and Texas, right? and then came back in, the, in in reincarnation times three as a National League team. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. The problem is if you grew up an American League fan, you really can't become a National League fan overnight. Mm, right, right. I mean, for whatever reason, I was wedded to the American League. Still am. Mm. My first All Star game was 1952. I went to the game in Philadelphia where Bobby Chance struck out the last three men and then it rained deluge, washed it out after five innings. You never knew if he was going to break Carl Hubble's record. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But that was an all-star game. If you were an American League fan, it was your chance to see the National League. That was exciting. Mm -hmm. Now with interleague play, and particularly when they banked it around the all-star game, who cares? <laughs> You see these players every other day or third day or fifth day. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. It, and it's been a long time since I've heard the All-Star game referred to as the Midsummer Classic. It ain't. Right. 
I mean, on television, the home run derby gets bigger ratings. Mm -hmm. But don't you think, like, um, now with uh, the winner, either American or National League, whoever wins, the team that represents that league in the World Series will have home field advantage? Do you think that I maybe think spices it up a little? No, it might spice it up, but it ain't my drink. <laughs> Who in the hell cares? You mean some relief pitcher or some pinch hitter is going to decide? Mm -hmm. Mm. Who has the home? What, what are you kidding? Mm. That was Fox's designation of how to get ratings. Mm. Mm. I don't think it's worth a nickel. Yeah. All right, enough about baseball. Oh, okay. Well, <laughs> we're gonna talk more about baseball okay. a little later. A little okay. later.